Since the last video, I have soldered all the wiring, although it's not in its completed state, because it will have to be shortened a bit, I think, to fit everything in. But um, there's the amplifier and the wires running into the middle of the crank. Going to the Arduino, which I have flattened out by removing the pins, so I'm now soldered directly into the circuit board. And um, I've also got this battery pack connected up. Now I was going to connect an NRF24 LO1 module because I didn't think you could power an Arduino from its V-in pin and USB at the same time, but uh, fortunately the USB voltage seems to be lower from this laptop than the Arduino's internal regulator voltage. And this issue with powering off the USB, as I have learnt, has actually um, caused me quite a bit of bother with setting up the amplifier. Because it, well, it makes sense, but uh, the output from the Wheatstone bridge is highly sensitive to the voltage which you put across the strain gauges. So what I think is happening was that the USB output from this laptop was not as stable as you'd expect. And so that was causing all the drift issues. Because now I'm getting far better data because the 5 volts from the Arduino's pin is coming off its internal regulator and the battery pack instead. So this data is now far smoother, as you can see. I can also demonstrate that uh, the reason that's almost a flat line is not because something has become disconnected, but because it's actually much better data I'm getting. There we go. It's responding nicely to bending the crank. And settling back down to a value as well. Very nicely indeed. So I'm uh, really pleased with that at the moment. The other thing I've been learning about is the amplifier. And I'm going to go through some graphs now. I spent some time with different resistors across the strain gauge that seems to send the balance of the bridge in the correct direction. And what I have here now is a graph of resistance against the bridge voltage. Obviously, as the resistance decreases, the voltage will increase as it becomes more out of balance. I also measured the output in the amplifier, so that would be what's fed to the Arduino, against the voltage across the bridge. And as you can see, we have to work within this zone here. If the voltage is too high, then the amplifier just gets stuck at its um, lowest output. And if it's too low, the amplifier just puts out its maximum, which is about 5.8 volts. Obviously the Arduino can only read up until the sort of 4.95 sort of area. So we've really got to work within this zone here and it does look like it's a fairly linear relationship which is good because that's what you want and um, so the aim is to with zero force is to get the voltage to be around about here so that we can work within this when you zone here when you push down on the pedal and on this zone when you're pulling up or if for example the crank is behind the other one, so where your foot is coming up the way. Um, and so yeah, that's the next thing to do, is to get the resistance right. And it looks like we're going to be working in this sort of area here, around about the 140 kilo ohm range. I'm sure that to anyone who knows anything about amplifiers, that graph is probably very uh, obvious and boring. But for me, it's really helped to demystify what's been going on. So I have moved the resistors from down in there up onto the amplifier. It's the same thing, just a different end of the wire. And that means I can cover this with tape temporarily 
and put the amplifier down into that space and also bind that on with, with tape. We can't actually uh, use it yet as a power meter because I haven't got the wireless communication set up, but we can do a force test on it and I can find out what the force against output value or equation is and we can then put that into the code ready for when it is wireless capable and um, I'm going to do that next, get it onto the bike the crank is now temporarily installed onto the bicycle this is my method for doing any sort of calibration I've got the scale there, spring, one of those spring loaded ones and it's attached to the rails of the saddle and what I do is I roll the bike backwards and apply the brake you can see if I roll the bike back it applies a force to the scale there and uh, I can lock the wheel in place with the brake I prefer to do it this way with the chain rings in place and the torque applied through the chain and the chain ring bolts because it, all the forces transfer through the crank in the same way as they will do when I'm cranking on the pedal. I know some people like to just put this into a jig and hang a weight off, off the bottom of the off the end of the crank but uh, this is my method. So what I've done now on the computer is I'm now putting two values out. One is the raw value the other one is zeroed out. So obviously for this to be correct it should be measured in newtons. This uh, scale does kilograms. But, uh, it's just a simple case of multiplying by 9.8 or something I think. Gravitation, acceleration due to gravity I think it is. And also you've got to be wary of keeping this crank at right angles as best as possible. It's a little bit tricky obviously with this because the spring, the way it works with the spring it's obviously going to stretch. But um, we are currently at a value of 2, so if I'll reset, we've got no weight on that, there we go, that's spot on 0 at the moment, so I'm going to roll the bike backwards, and we'll get it to 10 kilograms, which is right there, lock the brake, and we're getting a value of 52 and we're 680 ish so we're not anywhere near uh, reaching the the maximum at the moment which is good and then we'll release so we'll go slack and we're back to yeah, 0 or 1 0 1 between the two which is perfect I'm happy with the results now, and um, that looks very good. It's as linear as it's likely to be. We're using the rather inaccurate scales, um, and I've also calculated from these values the uh, likely resolution, and it's 172 grams. And the other old one that I made before was around about 140, so it's not bad. I've also calculated from these values that uh, it will max out with a weight on the pedal of 70 kilograms, which should be more than enough for my use, but if I feel like it, I might drop the zero force value down a little bit. Um, but otherwise, that looks good for now. These obviously are all in uh, weights, uh, not really a force or torque. So the next thing to do, because obviously this will hopefully be something that will spin, is to convert this into a torque. But uh, first I want to cover up the strain gauges, seal the amplifier and everything in um, once I'm happy with it. And then we can repeat this process and it will be well on its way to being a working power meter. But that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. Just for fun, because I've got this connected up at the moment, I'm going to apply full force on the pedal, pushing downwards. That's absolutely maxed out. That was me braced against the handlebars and really pushing on it. 
Now I'm going to check put the crank at its uh, vertical position and we're back to zero. And now I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to stand on the crank, stand on the two pedals and it drops down. And put as much of my weight on the right hand one as possible. There we go. And it comes back up hopefully to around zero. So as you can see we got uh, pretty close to maxing out and also we've dropped down to around about a sort of 400 or something mark. So I could definitely do with dropping the value down a little bit because I can go down I think the amplifier bottoms out at around about 350 so I could go a little bit lower.